When Nintendo announced the Nintendo Classic, it was met with huge positive reception and the masses flocked to pre-order one. Having only been released a couple of days ago, they have sold out almost everywhere and are already back ordered into 2017. And this is a must on many people's Christmas list this year. If you haven't checked one out yet, you can watch my review by clicking the card that will appear at the top of the screen now. The Nintendo Classic is packed full of 30 of the best games released in the NES, but if you're still on the fence about whether you want one, here are 10 of the best on the console which may sway your decision. My name is Doodles and this is the Top 10 Nintendo Classic games ranked. Coming in at number 10 is Punch Out, the boxing game released in 1987. The original version of Punch Out featured Iron Mike Tyson as the final opponent in the game, but in 1990, Nintendo decided not to renew their agreement and re released the game with Mr. Dream being the final opponent in the game. This is also the version that will appear in the Nintendo Classic. And while it's not as slick as modern boxing games, this game is so much fun to play, even nearly 30 years on, it's still beloved by so many people, often ranking in lists amongst the greatest games of not just the NES but of all time. And it may look easy, but trust me, this game is an absolute nightmare to complete. Coming in at number 9 is Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. And to be honest, either Castlevania game from the NES Classic could be on this list. They're both gaming classics. Originally released in 1987 in Japan, 1988 in North America, and 1990 in Europe. A fun fact this game was actually released in Europe on the day I was born. And the player once again assumes the role of the vampire hunter Simon Belmont, who is on a journey to undo a curse placed in by Dracula at the end of the first game. The gameplay departs from the standard platforming genre of the first Castlevania into more of a non-linear game in the style of Metroid with several RPG elements such as a world map which the player is free to explore and revisit. When most people think of Castlevania, they instantly think of Symphony of the Night which has gone on to become a cult classic and hailed as one of the greatest games of all time, but the Nintendo Classic is a great way to revisit some of the older games in the series that you may have missed or just not have been born when they were originally released, but for fans of Castlevania or just for side scrolling genre in general, I highly recommend you check this out. Coming in at number 8 is Final Fantasy 1. And like Castlevania, where most people think of Final Fantasy, I think of some of the newer games in the series, not the original ones that started the franchise. Final Fantasy 7 made the Final Fantasy series a household name overnight, but a decade before Final Fantasy 7, Squaresoft released their very first game in the series. The game was called Final Fantasy because Squaresoft was facing bankruptcy and believed that this would be their last game ever produced, and Squaresoft were known for their fantasy game, so this became their Final Fantasy game. It's quite a clever name, really. Since the release of the first Final Fantasy game, Squaresoft had gone on to create series such as the Chrono game, Super Mario RPG, Bushido Blade, Legend of Mana, The Bouncer, numerous other Final Fantasy games. They then joined Enix and gone on to continue the Dragon Quest series, even more Final Fantasy games, the Kingdom Hearts series, Just Cause, the newer Tomb Raider games, Deuce X, the list goes on and on. So if you're a fan of Final Fantasy or just Square Enix as a whole, you owe it to yourself to check out this game because without Final Fantasy 1, a lot of games you know and love may not have existed. Coming in at number 7 is The Legend of Zelda 2 The Adventures of Link. Zelda 2 is often the forgotten Zelda game in the franchise. Although the game was highly praised upon release, over the years it has become forgotten by many casual fans in favour of games such as Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess. But this game is really important in the history of Zelda. NPCs took on more of a life of their own and had more of a purpose in the world. And also the sages in the Ocarina of Time are named after towns found in Zelda 2. And Zelda 2 also combined open world RPG elements with side scrolling which made it really unique compared to other Zelda games. If you haven't tried it before but you are a fan of the Zelda series, you owe it to yourself to at least give it a try. It is often overlooked but it played a huge part in introducing many elements that carried over into future games. Coming in at number 6 is Mega Man 2, released in 1988 in Japan, 89 in America and 1991 in Europe. The game, like many others in the series, is a 2D size scroll and action game. The series hasn't really diverted away from the style or gameplay mechanics, even with the newer games, because, well, it just works. The player controls Mega Man as he travels through 8 stages to defeat various bosses before tackling Dr. Wily's fortress and defeating Dr. Wily to end the game. Mega Man 2 is the best selling in the series, but only sold 1.5 million copies, which for a highly regarded game is really quite low. The series might not have sold at the same level as games such as Mario or Zelda, but it has a huge cult following and is still played and loved by many people to this day. So if you haven't really played any Mega Man games before, you no longer have an excuse, you have one of the best in the series ready to be played. Now coming in at number 5 is Super Mario Bros. 1, the game that transformed gaming forever. Released as a sequel to the 1983 game Mario Bros, it was released in Japan and North America in 1985 and 1987 in Europe and Australia. The player controls Mario and in a two player game a second player controls Mario's brother Luigi as he travels through the Mushroom Kingdom in order to rescue Princess Peach, then called Toadstool. Hailed as pioneer and influential, Super Mario Bros. brought gaming to the masses, helping resurrect the gaming industry after the American video game crash in the early 1980s. Simple yet so much fun, 
this is side scrolling at its best. No complex story, the player is just thrown in at the first level and left to figure it out. Although the end goal is to save the princess, it's no long tutorial or opening. In fact, the first level of the game is the tutorial, with the level getting gradually more complex so the player can figure out how to play the game. So by the time they start level 2, they know what they're doing and they can begin their adventure. The game has gone on to sell over 40 million copies and Mario has gone on to become probably the most instantly recognisable characters, not just gaming but in pop culture in general. People of all ages, from small children to adults can enjoy Mario and plenty still do to this day. Super Mario is a game series that can follow you through your life. I started playing Mario games when I was very young and over 20 years later I still enjoy them and I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Coming in at number 4 is Metroid, released in Japan in 1986, America in 1987 and Europe in 1988. The player takes control of Samus in an open world 2D side scroller. Like many Nintendo games, the opening section of Metroid is used to get the player used to the game before becoming more difficult. Samus starts off with only the ability to fire a weak weapon and jump, but over time gains new abilities such as being able to use more powerful weapons, use bombs and roll etc. The game received widespread critical acclaim and sold really well. The series continued to thrive, becoming one of the most popular Nintendo franchises. Over the years the series has died off a bit, but recently a fan recreated the whole Metroid 2 which has met with widespread praise. Unfortunately Nintendo did shut it down, but it thrust the Metroid back into the spotlight. So this is your first time hearing about Metroid, or you haven't really gave it a go over the years, now is your time to go see what all the fuss is about. Coming in at number 3 is Super Mario Bros. 2. Originally released after Nintendo of America found the original Super Mario Bros. 2 to be too difficult, the game is a reskin of a Japanese game called Doki Doki Panic. The original Super Mario Bros. 2 was later released in the US and Europe as Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, and this version of Super Mario 2 was later released in Japan as Super Mario USA. Confusing, right? The game takes a different direction to other Super Mario games of this era. Super Mario 2 gives you the ability to play as four different characters, Mario, Luigi, Toad and Princess Peach. The player can also change between them whenever you start a level or lose a life. Each character has different traits which has gone on to carry over into future games, such as Luigi's ability to jump high but as rubbish traction and Peach's ability to float. These traits have been carried over and used in future games such as the new Super Mario Bros and the Mario 3D series of games. Super Mario Bros 2 went on to sell over 10 million copies and became the third best selling game on the NES and if you weren't one of those 10 million or you haven't played it on one of the various ports, now is your chance to check it out. In the number 2 spot is The Legend of Zelda, the game that started one of the most beloved franchises of all time. Released in 1986, Zelda 1 was developed side by side with the first Super Mario Bros game. While Super Mario is a linear side-scrolling game, Nintendo wanted to make Zelda as different as possible so they made the game completely open world. The game begins and the players just left to their own devices trying to find their way in the huge open world that is Hyrule. The player controls Link who aims to collect the 8 fragments of the Triforce in order to rescue Princess Zelda. During the course of the game, Link must travel through the overworld and through several dungeons, defeating enemies and getting the fragments of the Triforce. And regardless of your age, there's a good chance you've heard of the Zelda series and chances are you've played one or two of them yourself. And the Zelda series will forever go down in history as one of the greatest of all time and as a gamer you just owe it to yourself to take a step back in time and experience the game that started it all. Now before I unveil my number one pick for the NES Classic, here's a few games that didn't make the list but are still worth checking out. And taking the top spot is Super Mario Bros. 3, highly regarded as not only one of the greatest Super Mario games, but one of the greatest games of all time. Originally released in 1988 in Japan, 1990 in America and 1991 in Europe, Super Mario 3 continues the 2D side-scrolling style of previous games, but introduces a few new elements which have become mainstays in the franchise, such as giving Mario the ability to fly. An overworld screen was also introduced in this game and is going to be used in games such as Super Mario World and the new Super Mario Bros. series. The game also had its own spin-off TV series, which was... It was alright, I enjoyed it as a kid, it wasn't fantastic, but it weren't bad at all. I think it might actually be on Netflix now, so if you haven't checked it out, you can go and watch it on there. For years there was a fan theory that Super Mario Bros. 3 takes place on a stage and is a one big theatre act. In September 2015, Shigeru Miyamoto did confirm this. The game opens with a curtain being pulled, and obstacles in the game are hanging from the catwalk and objects are bolted to the background, uh, which does indicate that it is on a stage, and Mario also walks off the stage at the end of the level. As obvious as it is now, as a kid I never put two and two together but as an adult it's so obvious that's what they were trying to do. This game has gone to become one of the greatest of all time and although there's a good chance you've already played it due 
connect with various ports of a SNES the Game Boy Advance and the 3DS, Wii and Wii U virtual consoles, you'll definitely owe it to yourself to give it a playthrough once again. So right, that is the end of the list. That is my pick for the top 10 games in the NES Classic. Do you agree with my list? And what games would you put in your top 10 and what games do you wish were on the console but didn't make the cut? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on all my social media at Doodles Music. And I'll see you guys very, very soon in the next video.